Finally today, we profile Robert Martin. As an advocate for people with intellectual disabilities, Robert's voice has been heard at the highest levels, even the United Nations. Now, it's finally been heard at home. Robert's been made a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit. Attitude was with him at Government House as he received his honour. I had to fight for everything, just to be myself. It took me a long time to gain the confidence to do the things I wanted to achieve in my own life. There's nothing quite like having the whole country acknowledge your achievements. Oh, it's the um, uh, honours badge I'm actually getting today. You know, the, it's part of the um, medal thing. So That's tremendous. Well, we'd better be off. OK, then. Today, Robert Martin's at Government House for his investiture. Well, I feel very humble of, 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 of um, getting an award like this. Um, I think it's um, been a lot of hard work um, over the last um, you know, 30 years of... of um, been involved within the, the Sogsy movement, and I think you know our dreams have come to fruition because of um, today. Today, Robert Martin has been made a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit for speaking out on behalf of people with disabilities. And, and I'm just really um, pleased that um, you know that people with intellectual disabilities actually can be recognised for the work that they actually do. Hearing Robert speak so confidently today, you'd never realise the difficulties he's overcome to get to this point. So, who's in the army uniform should be able yep. to take you through. OK. Thank you. Robert spent many years of his life institutionalised at the Kimberley Centre in Levin. But Robert's been a passionate self-advocate since the early 80s, demanding a better life for himself and hundreds of others who are less able to speak for themselves. He's been involved with Inclusion International and through that organisation was invited to be part of the group that advised the United Nations on disability issues. He was there in New York as the International Declaration on the Rights of Disabled Persons was being drafted. This is where Robert's life began in institutions. In the 1980s, society realised places like Kimberley and Lake Ellis offered no kind of life. The last facility in New Zealand is now closed. But Robert entered institutions as a toddler and didn't get out till he was a teenager. I found it a really harsh, harsh environment. I mean, there were some, some good staff, but I also found it very, very um, hard. Like the food was, was terrible at times. You weren't known by your name, you were known by the villa that you were in. I think one of the sad things is, is like a lot of other children of intellectual disabilities, back in those days we were, we were abused by, by people. I wanted a cat and I got this cat called um, Kimba, and it had eyes as big as saucers actually. <laughs> and um, I had it in bed with me because I took it to bed, and the staff person came in and felt knocking on the door and kind of opened the window and threw my bed clothes off. and basically threw it out the window. And, you know, that cat was was my life back then because, you know, I didn't have friends like other people did. So that was my my friend. Did you get the cat back? Oh, yeah, I got the cat back. Yep. Because I actually made the cat sleep with me again anyway. So it didn't matter what that staff thought. I was going to do what I was going to do. You know, and that's what, um, that's what empowerment's all about. I got so frustrated with people, I often flew into a rage. People used to tell me that I would make no nothing out of my life. For an Robert's story is a compelling one. These in days, he's often Levin. called on to speak on disability and issues, disability. especially inclusion. Even back in them days, it was, it was pretty tough for, for people like us because people just didn't think we had a brain that we couldn't use it and people controlled our very thoughts, our very hopes, our very dreams. So it took a long time to actually gain the confidence to, to speak out. For the New Zealand Embassy. Today's in ceremony, in part, acknowledges all he's had to overcome. And for Robert, 
Well, it helps to put bad childhood memories further into the past. When he was 15, Robert left these corridors and was returned to his family. But he had to learn to live life in a way he'd never experienced. And I guess um, it was really difficult for me to, to come to terms with, with what had happened. Um, we also had to live life all over again, which I found really, really difficult because when you're institu institutionalised, you actually have everything done for you and you're allowed to think for yourself, you're allowed to do things for yourself. I began to think there must be a way to get my rights listened to. I began speaking to my friends who had an intellectual who had a disability like me. They had the same kinds of issues as me. He spent the past 36 years trying to get society to understand and respect people with intellectual disabilities. We wanted to be treated like human beings and we started to stand up for our rights. A few years later, we had a strike because one of our friends was not getting a fair go. The staff came and told us to go and do our jobs. We said, no, we're on strike. They said, you can't do that. I said, watch us. <laughs> that belief grew year by year and led to his role at the United Nations, working with Inclusion International. And Inclusion International felt it was time for a change, that people with intellectual disabilities need to represent people with intellectual disabilities. Oh, I think we made a power difference. You know, like I was the only one representing intellectual disabilities. No, throughout the whole world and you know, I just don't think I can do that because I'm only one person and I don't have all the answers. Now back in New Zealand, Robert is finally living the life he once only dreamed of. He's married, he consults to numerous organisations and indulges in his love of sport. He's coached Special Olympic soccer and plays both cricket and rugby. It's just as important as, as what my job is. It's, it's been my life. It's, it's been part of my, my life for, for a long, long time and I've really enjoyed the companionship of, of not only people with disabilities but also people um, within the community. I have never been one to stand up and say, pick me as your leader. Others see the skills and the abilities that you have and they will pick you for, your, for the leadership positions. What do you see are the biggest issues facing people with intellectual disabilities? The right to life, the right to be born is a, is a big one for us. Um, education, um, around um, supported decision making, which is one of the um, articles in the, in the convention. To me, an institution isn't just about bricks and mortar. It's about the attitudes of, of people. And I think that's one of the really important things that we've still got a lot of work to do. Mr. Robert Martin of Wanganui. For services to people with disabilities. Mr. Martin has led the self-advocacy movement for people with learning and intellectual disabilities for over 25 years. I've never seen this about myself. It's about us. And it's about um, all people with an intellectual disability. But I guess it, it's... Having a voice for the voiceless, and I think when, when we were at the um, UN, that was my prime objective. Robert knows there's still more work to be done to produce a truly inclusive society here at home. To me, this is what it's all about, giving other people the chance to become leaders as well. And awards like this highlight New Zealanders beginning to listen.